It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Jen Cohen as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's Countywide. Match Manager Jeff Walters in studio. Welcome back, Jeff. Thanks. And then uh, Coconino National Forest spokesman Brady Smith. Everybody knows Brady because you hear him on the air all the time. And uh, we're hearing a lot more of uh, Brady as well right now because of the wildfires. So before we get into today's show, I just wanted to take a look at what we've got going on in our local news right now. This morning already, uh, it is the 10th of May? 10th of May today. 10th it's, of May. Yeah. We've got a man in Sligman that was burning trash that started fire, burned some structures on his property. A brush fire at the base of the switchbacks north of Stono that occurred on Tuesday. Day morning. Wildfire on McMillan Mesa in Flagstaff this week. Prescott Fire had 11 small fires along Highway 89 mm -hmm. uh, near Watson Lake caused by likely a dragging chain. So they arrived and there was fire all the way down the side of the road. Uh, and then a lawnmower hitting a rock kicked up a fire here in the Verde Valley. Mm -hmm. So that's just what we're reading from Wednesday to today. And that's just a phenomenal amount. In addition, uh, Cocoa Forest put out an update on the Tinder fire, talking about the north northeast flank is not quite secured yet. It's mm -hmm. in difficult terrain. It's only approachable by air attack. Um, and so there's a portion of some of the folks that were evacuated before that are being put on set right now. So the ready, set, go comes into play here. So be set and just have your stuff ready just in case you've, you've got to go out and evacuation. So we've got that going on. Um, oh, and to top it off, we've got red flag mm -hmm. and wind advisories in place for both Thursday, May 10th and Friday, May 11th. And I think possibly, well, maybe not Saturday because Saturday is supposed to be quite a bit cooler. Right. Right. Am I, uh, am I on pretty good? Here? You are. So yeah. far, I'm just nailing. Yeah. So that's what we've got going on. And that's just <laughs> that's just the last few days. Right. But we, we've we've had everybody. Jeff, you've not been in here yet this year. But, you know, Brady knows that we've had folks in from the Prescott National Forest, Coconino National Forest, Kaibab National Forest, everybody and our local fire jurisdictions across Yapapai and Coconino County have told us over and over again that wildfire season, although it never goes away, mm -hmm. it's here year round. This year, our intense period of wildfire season kind of started back in March, April. Yeah, we dried up pretty quick, and this has been the an early, early start to well, a type one fire, the Tinder fire. Um, in, on the Coconino, you know, we had the type one fire, the Schultz fire in 2010. Then in 2014, we had the slide fire, and here we are two, four years later, two, 2018, uh, and we have a type one fire that started at the end of April. And that is pretty incredible to be so early into the season. It's unusual. I want to say Father's Day is when uh, I usually grilling or something, and I remember the Brins fire in yep. West Sedona up on the Mesa. It was Father's Day. Uh, there was another Father's Day where we had. It seems like Father's Day seems to be when that kind of right. happens, you know. But uh, May and June are typically our our big wildfire months, right? Yeah. You, you call it a Type One. Type One is when you guys have to call in the Type One team and they take control of the fire and and that they work on it until we we just back down to a type three this week on the tip right. right and so yeah i mean your type one is your is going to be your worst type of fire and those are the kind of things that we're talking about before fire season starts is what is the probability of having a type one fire this year um i i honestly wouldn't have thought it would have happened so early and was surprised that it did but um you know that's just how it goes and we've had a very dry winter and not much precipitation so mm -hmm. the the climate is ripe for that kind of thing and unfortunately it happened in addition that fire the tinder fire which destroyed i want to say 33 right or more structures 50 plus uh secondary structures so sheds outbuildings, outbuildings. things of that right that yeah. um it was caused by an abandoned and illegal campfire. Are we all, we've also, this year, we've also gone into, I want to say, stage two fire restrictions much earlier than we normally do. I want to say probably years the past it, yeah. probably the earliest, right? Yeah, typically yeah. it's in the month of May, we all kind of start to see that stuff happening. But At least stage the, one and then stage two, maybe June, depending on the conditions. So. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, stage one usually in May and then stage two comes in June because March, April, May, April showers bring May flowers, that sort of thing sure. going on. So typically 
hopefully we've got a little more rain out there. But right. to be honest, the the landscape when you guys drove down today, you probably noticed it as much as I do, is that it, it still looks like winter out there. It's just everything's yeah. brown. Brown. Yeah, it is really dry out there and. You know, we're in states too, but it doesn't always mean that people follow the restrictions, unfortunately. Um, and like you said, the tinder fire was part of an abandoned illegal campfire. And hopefully we'll be able to figure out um, the person or persons responsible for that. Uh, but we're always trying to harp on, it really doesn't matter what stage you're in at any time, if it's uh, questionable to have a campfire, even if it's legal. Um, you should really uh, take caution with that. And of course, even with the things that you're allowed to do during stage one or stage two, you should, still should question whether or not you should do them if, if it's questionable with the wind or with the, with the weather that's coming in. Um, you don't wanna have a campfire on a windy day and you definitely don't wanna have a campfire during restrictions because we're there for a certain reason, which is we are extremely dry and we've met the criteria to be there. I think right now the, the message is to anybody out there that if, if, if you see a fire or you smell smoke or anything, call 911. Just get it, get it done. The, the, the person in Sligman burning trash did not have a phone working at their house. They had no phone at all. And here we got this fire going out of control, but thank goodness there's people nearby that saw it happening and they called 911. So yeah. I would say if you're in the forest, you see a fire going, call 911. There's not supposed to be anything burning in the forest right now unless it's liquid propane and you can turn it on and off. That's, or the tinder fire. The tinder fire. Yeah, and we still have a lot of smoldering internal mm -hmm. and residual smoke from that. Um, and that probably, honestly, will produce smoke for the next several weeks because um, it's in canyon areas and it's going to have a lot of fuels that are still still burning uh, inside the f fire perimeter. So it's going to produce smoke and then today it'll probably produce even more sm smoke with the winds coming in uh, because we do have that northeast section that we don't have completely controlled and uh, maintained right now. Okay. So. Let's switch to Jeff and talk about aircraft. Uh, they're, yeah. they're key right now this time of year. You hear yeah. about it and you see it in the press releases. There's, there's six helicopters, there's a plane, there's this or that responding. What I've noticed the last couple of fires now is that they've actually burned for a few days before any air support could get in because unfortunately these fires are kicking off on days like we're having today with red flag and high wind. Sure. How busy have you guys been at the dispatch center this year? Uh, I'd say we're on the upper end of our... Uh of where we've been in the past. Um, definitely seen more activity as far as fires go. Going into restrictions, we're picking up more activity with the illegal campfires, which is good. You know, we're trying to find those and deal with those, you know, versus finding them later. Um, hence the tinder fire. So aircraft wise, um, there's quite a bit in the region and available. It's just a matter of uh, what exactly is being threatened and trying to compete for those resources. Um, Tinder fire was a great example. We could get the aviation that we needed. There wasn't a lot else going on uh, in the region, but when you have windy days like we had on the day that it blew up, um, today is another good day that we just might not be able to fly aviation because it's unsafe. At what point in time do the winds hit where Jeff says, okay, we can't put anything in the air. Do you make that call? Or no, who it's makes pilot. That's the pilot, the pilot yep. decides. Okay, so Always. what, does it vary from pilot to pilot or is it kind of a set standard that, okay, the winds are here, but we're not going out? Well, there, there's some discussion that happens amongst an air attack, which is overseeing the whole fire flying above at a, at a certain level. And then if you have other fixed wing or uh, rotor wing below that, they're kind of stacked in there. So those conversations are happening. Fixed wing might have a different um, limitation versus rotor wing. But once that's kind of reached, everybody is tired of getting bounced around and it's you know just becoming unsafe, then we just have to shut it down. I think what some folks may not understand either, and we'll just get to this really quick as we have to take a break, but um, fires create their own weather. I mean, you, yeah. you may have this beautiful sunshiny day out here, but once you get inside where this is happening, yeah. it's a different situation, is it not? It can be, yeah. On windy days, it's, you know, the wind may override all that, um, uh, but, adding that fire component definitely adds, you know, wind, smoke, uh, so visibility, um, it, it does definitely escalate uh, the safety aspect for those aviators. I didn't even think about the smoke. We gotta take our first break. Uh, website for you, firerestrictions.us. Go there, you can find out what fire restrictions are on any forest across the entire country at firerestrictions.us. Forest Dispatch Manager, uh, Jeff Walther in studio today, also spokesman Brady Smith for the Coconino National Forest. Countywide back in just a couple minutes.
it appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Being prepared is a part of who you are, but it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. Welcome back to Countywide Forest Service Dispatch Manager Jeff Walther. You are with the Coconino National Forest. It's the Flagstaff Dispatch Center, but you take care of Coconino National Forest with the dispatch? Correct. Yep. Okay. Not the press kit or anybody, just, just the Coconino. Yeah, we're Coconino enough, specific. Yeah that's, yeah, that's a handful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then spokesman Brady Smith from Coconino National Forest also in studio today. We wanted to get to drones. Last year we had the... Um, Goodwin fire. Yep. There was there was a drone in that one, and uh, it actually shut that firefight down for a while, and it allowed that fire to get right up into some community areas at that point in time. We also had that happen on the Tinder fire, and then we see it from time to time throughout throughout the year with the stories when the fires are going on that there was a drone. And uh, Jeff, I think some people out there think it's just this little tiny plastic thing, right? With with little tiny gears, and what's the big deal if it runs into a helicopter or a plane? And what's the big deal, Jeff? Pretty significant. Is it? So, yeah. Because I've always been told that you don't want to run into anything <clears throat> with a plane or a helicopter. Yeah, anytime uh, something falls out of the sky, it's probably not good. Um, and when we're trying to conduct our aviation um, operations, having anything that's an unknown, like a drone, you know, birds, that kind of stuff, you can't control. But when it's an, another human out there with a drone, trying to accomplish something, what I don't know. It can be very obtrusive and it can be dangerous. So we just have a policy of shut down aviation until we get the airspace cleared, which could be um, have an adverse effect on firefighting operations. I would say it slows things down most definitely and puts a lot of people on the ground yeah. in some serious danger when you don't have, I mean, what if you needed a helicopter? What do you guys call those that, 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 that drop the water with a helicopter? Um, well, just a Type 1 or Type 2 helicopter. Right, yeah, that's type right. Three. Type 1 or Type 2. That's what it's yeah, called. Yeah. Let's get these words right. Right. The Type 1 <laughs> or Type 2. Let's say I've got, you've got eight firefighters down on the ground yeah. that got fire approaching on them, and they need a bucket of water dropped on them. Yeah. Well, now you don't have a helicopter doing that, do you? Right. Because you got somebody taking pictures with a drone up in the sky. It was the same thing. Well, that's what happened with the tinder fire. I mean, we had the aviation that was helping fight the fire. Uh, was shut down for at least 15 to 20 minutes because we had an incursion with a drone. Um, don't know who the pilot was, weren't able to ever contact that person or locate them, but they did have an effect of uh, shutting down aviation for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Now, was that the pivotal moment? No. It, it, luckily in that case, no, it wasn't. But um, what if? it could be. 
It could yeah. be, and you don't know. Yeah. And so it's just it's something that can be avoidable. Um, most drones operate operate below 400 feet, or they have to, anyways. And uh, most of our aviation that's helping out are operating at about 150 feet or less. Oh wow! So okay, so these drones are above them. Yeah, can be above them. They're they're right in that area of where our aviation uh, assets operate. And there's a no fly when, when there's a wildfire going on. Does that go into effect immediately, or when it's decided no. we need air attack support? So it's it's something that we have a discussion on again, and we talk about you know how much aviation we're going to have, the impact to the area, um, and so it's all based on safety. So we want to make a safe environment for the aviators. Um, and to do that, we put a TFR in place, a temporary flight restriction, and we have to get you know information from the fire, from usually air attack, to fill that form out and then send it through the FAA to get it you know approved. And once it's in place, then a, a notum goes out to all airmen, so they can see that aviators can see that whether it's a private plane, commercial. Um, drone operators that are certified by the FAA have that. They could go find those notums and find out that there's a TFR. So when they come in there and they fly within that TFR, you know, knowing it, we're assuming that they know it, um, because they are pilots of a drone, uh, that they're breaking the law, and, you know, there should be some consequences to that. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, speaking of consequences, so basically what we're saying is drones, if there's a wildfire going on, I can understand why people want to get the, a drone up there and get the video footage and the pictures and stuff like that, because it's pretty neat, but at the same time, it's putting a lot of lives in danger, I think. And then, then you got people's property, too, that's, you know, the, we lost a lot of homes in the tinder fire. The, the fire just raced right up that, that canyon and yeah. got in there, so it's just, it's just devastating. And I, I was what, looking at tweets last week and the people who were allowed to go back home. I mean, here we are less than a week from when people were allowed to go back home. And um, <clears throat> I was seeing tweets from people who, um, this is my grandparents' cabin. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up coming here every summer and we went fishing and riding quads. And, and now, and the picture is just this, you know, this stone chimney standing there. You know, it's really sad. So, yeah, um, yeah people just need to, when there's a fire, a wildfire, I think people just need to back off and let you guys do your job and get it done and save as much as you can, which can be difficult. Again, red flag and wind advisories. You know, when that happens, uh, uh, you guys hold your breath on days like today? I hold my breath anytime we get to May and June. Yeah. yeah. Anytime I, I, it seems like when I'm walking out of the, the house in the morning, the first thing I'm looking at is uh, for smoke in the skies because you just never know what's going to hit you that day. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, and we really don't need it today. The red flag days is no fire at all, so we don't need that today. Um, let's talk a little about response. Uh, we just had a fire, and um, the facility fire was this week. Uh, we had the facility yep. fire. It was stopped at six acres, but yep. I was really impressed. Um, I think, Brady, you were sending out tweets, somebody mm -hmm. was, about just how fast. Uh, 1.30, call comes in, there's there's this fire just a few miles uh, west of Flagstaff, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden there's 60 personnel on it. There's a Type 1 or Type 2 helicopter on there, and there's all these other things that have responded. That's really fast. How do you guys get there so fast? Because it's not like you're a fire department or anything like that, but it, it get really no, fast. But we have resources, you know, on every day, uh, a plethora of resources, whether they're local engines. We've got resources that are here helping out. Um, we've got two Six Rivers National Forest engines from Northern California that are here. Um, Pike Hotshots just left today from Colorado. They were here for 14 days in the area. So we've got all these resources that are local and then supplemental that come in from other areas around the country to help us. So when we get a fire, a report, immediate you know reaction is to let's start sending stuff that way. Some people might be you know at point A, some people might be out in the forest at wherever doing other things. So they all try to convene, and it usually happens in a fairly quick response. Well, that's say, because yeah, the facility fire was was done quick. I think it took about two hours. So we got to take another break. Again, the website you want to remember is firerestrictions.us for restrictions within our national forests as well as state lands, BLM lands, uh, and then talk to your local fire jurisdiction about restrictions that are going on in your very own backyard. Uh, spokesman Brady Smith with Coconino National Forest and Flagstaff Dispatch. Dispatch Manager Jeff Walter in studio, back in just a couple minutes.
panic is not a successful investment strategy, but unfortunately, it's often the response of investors when the markets catch them off guard. Hello there, this is Matthias Sandoval, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor in Cottonwood. We can help you prepare for markets unpredictable ups and downs. Together, we'll focus on long-term, disciplined approach to investing instead of overreacting to daily headlines. Stop by the office at 707 East Dominguez Avenue in Cottonwood for a face-to-face appointment. Only you making sense of investing member SIPC. If you need a reliable company for air conditioning, heating, and plumbing, call this number, 567-5315. That's the number for the award-winning Verde Solar Services. It's a family-owned business that's been serving the Verde Valley since 1983. Save up to $1,500 on a new carrier AC system and $400 on a new water heater. Rely on the experts, Verde Solar Services. Give them a call or visit them online at verdesolar.com. A factory-authorized carrier dealer. Hello, this is Randy Garrison, your Yavapai County Supervisor, representing District 3. My wife Debbie and I were fortunate enough to grow up in Cottonwood and know how special it is to live right here in the Verde Valley in Yavapai County. I've been working hard to support my friends and neighbors and keep rural Arizona a great place to live, work, and raise our families. Please reach out to either me or my assistant, Brandy Bateman, if you have any questions, concerns, or just want to know how you too can participate in serving our communities. Check us out at www.yavapai.us slash district 3. Howdy, friends and neighbors. I'm Lewis Rice with Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. To all mothers, we hope you have a happy Mother's Day. That's the wish of all of us at Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Even though we're grateful for moms every day, let's make a little extra effort on Mother's Day to show our appreciation for all she does and the mom she is. Once again, a very happy Mother's Day to all you mothers from all of us at Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Welcome back to Countywide. We've got just a few minutes left in the program. Jeff's going to give us a rundown on exactly how many fires we've had at this point in time. And then, Brady, you mentioned something during the break, too, that I would like to talk about. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so just as an update for the year, so 2018 so far on the forest, we've had 37 human-caused fires, two lightning from uh, just two events that have come through. Um, assisted uh, with 16 different fires with Arizona State uh, that would fall under their jurisdiction, 13 within the city of Flagstaff, so 13 actual wildfires, three out at, uh, on uh, Navajo BIA and six within Hopi BIA, which were all affiliated. So we deal with all these. On top of that, uh, abandoned campfires for the year 69 that we found. And when you talk about restrictions, um, so everything under restrictions is illegal campfires at that point, not abandoned, they're illegal. Um, And so we're up to 98 during our restriction period. And a lot of that has to do with even now that we're in stage two, even if you're in a developed campground, it's not okay to have a campfire. And so we account for those when people, when campers in a developed campground have a illegal campfire that now becomes part of our statistics. So that's why that number's up there. Are we up higher or lower than last year? Well, um, in which respect? Yeah, yeah, okay. All of it, yeah, I'd say we're on the upper end, just upper due to end. the conditions. And with, so. with two months of this still to go where yeah. before the yeah. monsoon arrives, I mean, Weather Service has said maybe the monsoon will be here early just because the temperatures are heating up so much, but I mean, we don't want to roll the dice on that one right there, so. Believe um, it when I see it. So I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Believe it when you see it. Yeah. So we still have two months of what would be considered our, you know, really serious wildfire season right now. Yeah. And, and we're already at these numbers, at least on the Coconino National Forest. I think it's lower on the Prescott National Forest because it's a little bit hotter. Mm-hmm. But the Coconino National Forest, I mean, you guys have got two main drags running right through it, and it's the coolest area as well. So, yeah. yeah that's yeah, a primary, so. prime location for people coming up from Phoenix. The, the first place that has lower temperatures to jump off the interstate and camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I live just near Forest Road 700. I know that one just fills up. It just fills oh, yeah. up in the, you, oh, yeah. you can hear stuff yeah. going on out there, okay. So we are under stage two fire restrictions. We're not gonna get to what I was gonna ask you, Brady, but right. we are under stage two fire restrictions. Uh, red flag warnings and wind advisories in place for Thursday, May 10th. Odds are we're gonna have red flag, and it's the whole state, by the way. Uh, weather Service breaks it down for area to area, but if you pull up the Weather Service maps right now, the entire map is hot pink and red. Mm-hmm. It is just, uh, you know, just ready to explode basically and then it's going to be carrying on on friday as well and saturday's also windy too so we don't want uh campfires 
no campfires. At all. I was going to say, we you know, can't have campfires at all anywhere yeah. in the state right now. Just so be super careful. Yeah, no, no campfires. All right, guys, thanks for coming in. Jeff, good to see you again. Yeah, you too. And we'll have, we'll have you back and talk more about it. And okay. uh, I would like to get a hot shot member in, too, to kind of find out what goes on okay. in their heads and, yeah. and, and have, their, have them bring their gear so we can look at the gear that they, they have to carry around. Sure. I wouldn't want that job. Brady, good to see you, too. See all right, you. again, uh, website, firerestrictions.us. Check it out a lot and contact your local fire jurisdiction to find out restrictions in your own backyard. That's today's County Wide. Thanks for watching and listening, and we'll talk to you again next time.